Hi friends, welcome to my new course CSS. So CSS, the full form of the CSS is Cascading Style Sheets. Cascading Style Sheets. So when we now, if you are coming to the first time of this course CSS, I request you to first follow the series of HTML complete course. I have already completed this HTML complete course. If you want, you can go there and you can see that HTML. And after completing of this HTML course, it is recommended that then you can follow this CSS course. Now, in this playlist or in this video section, in this series, we will learn the complete concepts involved in the CSS. We will try to learn each and every property and all the properties. What are the properties that are involved? Most of the properties we will try to learn in the, what are the CSS available in this one? We will try to learn it. So first before starting the CSS, so all of them who are coming from the front-end development or web developer or anything who are coming from the web developer background, they will be knowing about the CSS. So that is nothing but a cascading style sheet. So CSS means you cannot think that whether it is a, it is not a programming language or otherwise it is not a markup language like the HTML. So CSS is just as a user to style the web page. Okay. CSS is a language. It is used to style a web page. As I already told you, CSS stands for the cascading style sheet. And also CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on the screen, paper or in another media. So that means CSS describes about how HTML elements should be displayed on the screen. So paper means in the print where we are taking the print also, we can define that one using the CSS. CSS saves a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. So the CSS external style sheets are stored in a CSS files. <coughs> we'll try to learn about the CSS file also. Why we use the CSS now? Now we need to understand why we use the CSS. So why we use the CSS is CSS is used to define styles for your web pages, including the design layout and variations in the display for different devices and the screen sizes. So why we use the CSS? So for example, if the CS, uh, CSS, if we, when the CSS was not introduced, HTML was there to, uh, to solve this problem. But normally HTML is not never intended to contain the tags for formatting a web page. For example, when HTML 3.2 specifications and all those things are there. So then for adding a font and all those things, we used to add a font tag or color attribute so we used to add these all, these all types of things in html 3.2 specifications but now when we are trying to develop a big uh, multiple web pages so adding the font size for each and every web pages is uh, has become a nightmare and also it becomes a long and expensive process so to solve this type of problem the world web consortium that is nothing but w3c created the css so css now it will remove the styles formatting from the HTML page and we can create these all the CSS in a separate file. That is nothing but dot CSS file. How the HTML we will be having in a dot HTML file. In the same scenario, we can have the CSS in a dot CSS file. That is an external style sheet. We call this one as an external style sheet. We learn about this cascading also. What is the meaning of this cascading also? We'll try to learn it. The style definitions are normally saved in an external CSS file. With an external style sheet file, you can change the look of an entire website by changing just one file. So let's try to see the syntax. <clears throat> so now we need to understand. So we understand what is a CSS and now we need to understand. So what we will be writing in the CSS. So in the CSS, we will be writing a set of rules. <clears throat> so we'll be writing a set of rules. It consists of a selector and a declaration block. So first one, you'll be having a selector and followed by a curly braces like this. And in this one, you will be having a property and a property value. So this is nothing but a CSS rule. So this is nothing but a CSS rule. So this is like this you will be having. The selector is what is this one is. It will point to the HTML element you want to style it. The declaration block, this declaration block contains one or more declarations separated by a semicolon. So here you can have one property. This is a declaration. And you can have another property with a value separated by a semicolon. So like this also you can have it. Multiple CSS declarations are set separated with a semicolon and declaration blocks are surrounded by curly braces. So this is how we will be having. 
so example is for example let's say that i want to target a paragraph element so i want to give the color of red so this is a property and a property value and i can i want to align the content of this one in center so i can use like this so like this we can use it so this is about the css structure so how the css will be there so this is about the about the introduction of the css now if you try to see if i go into this html so this is our basic html and here i am having a p tag okay so i am writing some content here so this is our p tag now what i want to do is so if you want to write the style so we need we will be creating a new file there is nothing but you can say main.css so like this the file <clears throat> the file should be main.css and here i am writing p tag p elements this is a selector and this completely is a css rule right now i am writing the declaration so i want this one to be a color of red so if i try to execute this code so if i try to open in the live server so let it open so it's starting yeah so if you try to open here so here you are able to see this p element right and here we are able to see the uh, what i can say the content but this time this is not in red color why because we have mentioned here the color of the paragraph element should be in the red color but here this paragraph element is not in red color why because so we need to add a link relation between these two files so somehow we need to inject the css file into the html so how we can add this one is using the link tag using the link tag relation is equal to style sheet and the href we need to give the path so already you know about the absolute path and the relative path here you can give whatever you want it like the image src and anchor link so in the same scenario you can give it here i am having main.css so now we have established a connection between the html and the css file now if you try to see the same output this time this is in red color so this is how we will be writing the css in the first time so this is how we will be writing so now if you try to see we have created a connection between the html and css and this is a paragraph element and here if you try to see this is how we are writing a text uh, uh, css rule now if you try to see so this is a selector and these are all the um, what i can say these are all the declarations now if I, I can i can add multiple declarations also so i can say that text align center so i can use this one also if i try to refresh this page so this is in the center so if i go here if i want to make it as width of 100 pixel i can also give it as a width of 100 pixel see so like this we can change the behavior of this or the format of this paragraph element using the css so this is what i want to explain you so we'll learn about one by one these all the uh, features available uh, properties available in this one so these are all the declarations we'll try to learn one by one so this is a basic introduction of the css in the next video what we'll try to do is we'll try to see what are the different ways how we can relate the how we can establish a connection between a css and html in how many different ways we can write the css we'll try to see it in the next video hope you understood about this one if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you